We all know that ads pay for the internet. You know that, you're watching this on YouTube and we're probably served a couple of ads before this video even started. But how much of the internet is ads and what can you do about it? Let's dig in. Hey there, home lovers, self-hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here, I wanted to talk to you about an experience I had just last week that really reopened my eyes to how many ads there are out there and how a lot of information is just leaking out of our home networks that we can block pretty easily. Here's the story. I've got older parents. They're in their early 70s and they're not tech savvy and that is fine. My mom relayed to me of how much for browsing and apps are filled with ads and how frustrating that was for her and my dad. She was gonna pay for some subscription service to try to block them and of course I said, no, that's not the right way to do this. We can clean up everything for the whole house and and all of your devices, and you won't have to pay for an app that's also very likely spying on you at the same time. But before we get into how I solve that for them, let's talk about the ad problem. Ads are everywhere. In fact, internet advertising revenue reached a record high of $225 billion, increasing by 7.3% year over year overall between 2022 and 2023, according to the newly released IAB Internet Advertising Revenue Report, full year 2023 conducted by PwC. That's an incredible amount of advertising revenue generated just in internet ads only. To put that in perspective, $225 billion is more than the GDP of Greece, an entire country. That's just one year's worth of internet ads. So what's the impact of this kind of advertising saturation on our browsing experience and privacy? And the answer is not great. According to the Electronic Privacy Information Center at epic.org, Americans are inundated with an estimated 5,000 ads per day, up from just 500 a day in the 1970s. Users are being tracked using a variety of different methods across the web. That information is then bundled up, bought and sold, and then used to target you with advertisements. Ads can be blocked in many ways, but they all basically boil down to two different deployment methods, device level blocking and network level blocking. Let's take a look at both of them in detail. Device level blocking is the easiest to implement and is typically done by running software on your computer or your mobile device. This includes browser extensions like uBlock Origin, AdBlock Plus, or AdGuard that work by intercepting requests sent to ad servers and blocking using lists of known ad servers. They also feature abilities like element hiding and script blocking to give you more control over what you want and don't want to see on a website. Browser-based ad blocking extensions are really useful and do a fantastic job. I personally use uBlock Origin amongst others and they work really well, but they're limited in protecting only the device you're running on and not everything on your network. And sadly, their lives may be short-lived here in the near future. Google has made changes to Chrome that fundamentally change how extensions function in the browser. Google's stance is that their new approach, known as Manifest V3, will improve the browser's performance, security, and privacy. However, this change also limits the functionality used by current ad blocking extensions like uBlock Origins, making it harder for them to do their jobs effectively. And it's not lost on anyone that Google stands to benefit from limiting ad blocking in the browser, considering that in 2023, Google owned nearly 40% of the digital advertising market, followed by Facebook and Amazon, respectively. While device level blockers are great for individual devices, they fall short when you want network wide protection. With a home full of smart devices, you need something that's more powerful and centralized, something that can clean up every connection in the house, not just one PC or phone at a time. And device level protection doesn't stop the myriad of other IoT devices like your smart TVs, home assistants, and more that are constantly sending unnecessary information back to their corporations about your use of those devices and viewing habits. The alternative to device level blocking is network level blocking. Network level blocking affects all the devices on your network equally by filtering out DNS queries or blocking attempts to access IP addresses directly on the internet. There are a variety of different ad blocking systems out there like Pi-hole, PF Blocker NG, and AdGuard Home, and the main benefit for systems like these is that you get centralized control over blocking for your entire network, and they'll also provide you with really incredible information about what's really going on with the devices talking to the internet, which we'll look at here shortly. Back to the story at hand. My solution for my parents was to deploy Pi-hole to filter out DNS queries and clean up their browsing, app, and media experience. To do this, I grabbed a simple SBC like this one here, installed Linux on it, and deployed deployed Pi-hole. I like Pi-hole because it's easy to deploy in a container and quick to set up and block ads. Pi-hole is a free and open source software system that provides network-wide ad blocking that works across all devices on your network. It works by stopping ads before they even load, improving your browsing experience, and protecting your privacy. Pi-hole is easy to set up on a Raspberry Pi or other similar piece of hardware, and it works across smartphones, laptops, smart TVs, and even smart home gadgets. 
Since it's free and open source, Pi-hole gives you an effective way to stop ads without having to pay for subscriptions or rely on commercial software. Let's take a look at what it looks like to deploy Pi-hole from a network diagram perspective. All right, let's take a look at my parents' network before I introduce Pi-hole to block ads for them. Their network is very simple. Their ISP is Comcast, and they use the provided Xfinity Wi-Fi router for everything in their home. Everything is connected via Wi-Fi, like their mobile phones, smart TVs, IoT cameras, and computers. In this setup, whenever a device needs to resolve a website like, say, Google.com, their client would connect out to a public DNS server to get its answer and then make a connection. Now, let's take a look at how we introduced Pi-hole. Their network stays essentially the same. Same ISP, same home router. We're just going to be adding Pi-hole to their network and directly connecting it to the router. Configuration-wise, we will make the Pi-hole take over DHCP and DNS functionality from the Xfinity router. This means that its job will be to hand out IP addresses and resolve DNS queries from clients on the network. Now, when any client on the network attempts to get to a site, instead of using public DNS to resolve the address and going there, the client will use Pi-hole to resolve that address. If that URL is on a block list, Pi-hole will give back an address of 0000 instead and effectively block that ad. Pretty simple. This video isn't going to go into detail on how to set up and configure Pi-hole because your network might be similar or vastly different. If this is something you'd be interested in though, drop a comment below and let me know. If there's enough interest, maybe we'll put something together for it. Now let's take a look at what we found when we deployed Pi-hole on their network. This is the Pi-hole login screen. Once we're logged in, we land on the Pi-hole dashboard that gives us a stat on the last 24 hours of use. The cards at the top are the KPIs I want to call out. In the last 24 hours, there have been a total of over 60,000 queries, and out of those 60,000, nearly 22,000 of them were blocked. That's a bit over 36% of all the queries happening on my parents' network, and they're just two people in their 70s. Wow. Further down the page, we get some really interesting details about the top permitted and blocked domains. The Netflix blocks really caught my attention. Interestingly enough, logs.netflix.com was blocked 18,035 times in a 24-hour period. In fact, the top three blocks in that 24-hour period were all Netflix. I find this most troubling because while my parents do have a Samsung Smart TV, which does have the Netflix app, my parents don't have Netflix, as in they don't have an account and nothing is logged into that app. So what the absolute hell is that Netflix app doing? This is where the realization I mentioned earlier hit me. There's so much data leaking out of their network that they're not even aware of. Data that, at least in my opinion, Netflix isn't entitled to, especially since they don't even have an account. Not cool Netflix, not cool at all. This is a perfect example why you shouldn't ignore network-wide ad blocking. It's not just about annoying pop-ups, it's about protecting your privacy from companies collecting your data without your knowledge. Pi-hole also provides historical information as well. We can swing over to long-term data on the left and hit graphics first. Now we'll select a date range and grab seven days since the system hasn't even been up that long and we can get a nice histogram of the utilization over the days. Over in the query log, we can dig further into the data. For example, we'll uncheck the permitted queries so we can drill down on what was blocked, then we'll grab the same seven-day time span, and wow, in that seven-day period, a total of 157,112 queries were blocked. That number is stunning. And if you feel so inclined, you can scroll down and page through all of the blocks. At a total of 15,712 pages, I'll pass, thanks. The last section I want to show you is the top list section. Again, we'll select the last seven days, and once again, we can see the unbelievable number of blocks of that Netflix app, also the unbelievable amount of allowed accesses to cdn.samsungcloudsolutions.com. That too is mind-blowing. I wouldn't be surprised if Samsung were doing some suspicious data mining on its own as well. I don't want to come off sounding like a hypocrite. Yes, technically ads are how you're watching this video right now. But let's be real, when it comes to your privacy, the line has been crossed. I think that the pendulum has swung too far to the side of ads and that the pie hole stats clearly show that. Over a third of my parents' DNS queries were ads and that is too much. Then there's the visibility of what's leaking out of a network that doesn't need to be. Netflix shouldn't be pulling data from apps on smart TVs that don't have active Netflix accounts or rather at all, honestly. I don't think anyone watching this will disagree with that statement, and that alone is a justification for using an ad blocker at home. It's your internet and your privacy, and you have the ultimate control over your network and your user experience. Finally, I want to know what your go-to ad block setup is. Is it Pi-hole, U-Block, device level, network level, both, or are you still putting up with the ad overload? Let me know in the comments below what you're using to protect yourself and your family.
And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you've finished watching this video, how about checking out this playlist over here of other great home lab videos we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great home lab idea, we can help. <laughs>